Recording in both places. Take one. For the last couple of weeks, I've been giving you short videos, basically progress updates on what the van build looks like. One on Sunday, one on Wednesday. Then they're short. They could be two minutes, five minutes. And they're, like I said, they're, they're project updates. I'm not all that excited about what I'm putting out in the way of video. I like to do a bit of a production. I like to have a story. I like to have surprises. I like to keep you entertained. I like to keep you interested. And I just hope that I'm doing that with these, these updated progress reports on Sunday and Wednesday. They're short. They could be two minutes, five minutes. Uh, I'm not gonna be doing any traveling until May, whether when I go to a, a rally in Pennsylvania and I bring either one of these vans, either my pleasure way or I bring this one for its maiden voyage. Uh, God help me, I hope I get it done for that trip. But uh, back to these videos, uh, it's, it's tough for me from Sunday to Wednesday, it's hard for me to get anything markedly different or installed that you would look at and be interested. Now this week, for instance, I did a lot of work in the van. I got a lot done. But if you stuck your head in there, you'd say, what the hell did you do this week? I don't see anything different. Because it's kind of all behind the scenes. You know, I'm gonna start putting up my wall skins and getting those cut to fit and sculpted. How am I gonna mount those to the, to the van body? Remember I said, I'm not gonna violate the integrity of the van chassis. My housework is separate from the van. And I wanna keep it that way. Uh, but anyway, Tell me what you think about these shorter videos twice a week. Do you want to go back to one more involved, longer video on Sunday? I can't give you both. I can't give you a big Sunday video and a short update on Wednesday. It's too much work. I'm trying to find a balance between giving you a good product, a video, and also getting the van done, moving it along. It's, I've had this thing almost a year. April 17th, I will have had this van a year. When I started, I said, five months it'll be done. We'll start on the second one. Now I'm hoping I get it done for mid-May. Imagine? Anyway, that's where I'm at. Let's roll the video. All right, here's what I'm doing. I gotta put this wall board up, right? And if you remember me talking, I have a 13 and a quarter inch depth to this. This is the white leather. When I ram this piece up into the back end of the van here, it's touching the back of the van there, but there's a gap here. This is on an angle, okay? It's not only on an angle, it's on a slight curve. Now, how do we transfer this shape to this piece of wood? Well, we're gonna use a template, cardboard. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a cleat. Now, the whole purpose of this cleat, the sole purpose of this cleat is an extra set of hands for me because I'm coming in with a piece of cardboard, right? So I got to hold the cardboard, I got a pencil with a wheel on it, and I got to start scribing this thing. I need an extra set of hands, so I'm going to rest my cardboard on here, and that's how we begin uh, striking our template. So what I forgot to tell you inside was when you're going to begin your cardboard template, Start with a nice square edge. Typically, you're gonna use a piece of uh, scrap cardboard to make a template. So cut it down so you get yourself a nice square edge. All right, now, you have a hole saw, different diameter hole saws. When you cut a hole with these things, this is what you're left with, okay? These things come in handy. Now, I like to use the thin ones rather than a thick one. Luan works really well for me. This is three quarter in stock, it's too thick. Because what I want to do is get my pencil in and I can't get my pencil point to come out the bottom of three quarter. But when you use that hole saw, what you're left with is a perfect circle with a hole in the center. It's as about as good as it can get. You hear the sirens? I drove 60 miles and the sirens followed me. So you come in, with your nice squared off piece of cardboard. You put it in place. And what I'm gonna do, just to get me started, I'm just gonna lop off the corner. But when you cut away that corner, just to get you in a little closer, B 
be careful. You see this distance, whatever this distance is, you can't go beyond that up here because you want this to fit into the corner. So you just lop off a little bit of the corner just to get you in a little closer. Okay, now I'm in there. See, that brought me in a little closer. Here's your wheel. You've got to make sure that the distance from the edge of the wheel to your pencil is on the template. If it's not, you still need to get this closer. You lop off a little more up there. So that's what we're going to do. We'll lop off a little more. Then you check it again. Now I'm on the cardboard, just barely. But for these purposes, now here's what you got to do. You got to hold that wheel against the template. This is why I needed my extra set of hands. And you start scribing. You can see that. Make sure the template, the cardboard, doesn't move. Now, I want to show you something here. There's actually a little jog in this. There's a, a, a chassis part there. You can see it. And the wheel picked up that jog. I made my cut. The jog is in there. And now, when I put this piece in, look at that. It fits like a glove. It's perfect. See the jog? There's a little bump right here in the chassis. And my wheel took it into account. I got angles going every which way. And that template, let me get this damn wire out of the way. So now I can transfer this to the squared edge of my stock, my Luan stock. And I can wrap my wall and put it in. Bada bing, bada boom. Shelf. This is the shelf for my rear window covers. That's all this is for. It's purpose built just for that. Don't think you're gonna put your bowling balls up there. You gotta find another place for them. This is a dry fit. All I did was put everything together and make sure it fit. That's why they call it a dry fit. Uh, I do have to make some tweaks. I got my little pencil out and I made my notes and my marks. One thing I, I saw that was a little embarrassing for me, when I installed this cleat, that, that the boards are resting on. It's bowed, I made it bowed to take the shape of the rear of the van, but it's a straight cleat, a straight piece of wood going this way. But the frame members in the van ceiling are on an arc, as we know, I just put in eight of them. So I have to take that cleat down and trim it. I gotta make the top an arc so that these boards flow down to the corners the way they're supposed to. Right now, in this corner, it's fighting me. I couldn't understand why. And then I went, oh, dummy. So I'll fix that. Uh, here's, see these guys? These are, these are my front window covers from my Pleasure Way. These are by a company called R&B Components. These were a gift. They were given to me by the new owner of Womp. A uh, very nice gesture. Um, what I did is I added some extra killer magnets to this thing all around. In some cases, I cut it open and glued them inside. But with these killer magnets, you pretty much just have to throw this thing against the window and it sticks. It does just what you want it to do. So anyway, I'm using these guys as stand-ins because I didn't make my covers yet for the back windows. You're gonna roll them up and you're gonna stick them up here. It's a perfect place for them. Right? And of course I had to make sure that they fit. Right? So there they go. Again, this is only built for those covers. Uh, and it looks like, it looks like I could cut two inches back, which I'm going to do. This is a little too deep. Proportionally for the size of the van and the area that it occupies, this is too deep. So I'm happy that I'm gonna cut it back two inches and it'll look nice and tidy. I got a nice little front edge here to keep it somewhat sturdy and there's a lip on it. So hopefully these things don't fall out. They kinda, this is, this is kind of a good little spot for them. If they do start to slip out when you're driving, maybe we need a bungee or a net or something. We'll work on that when we get to that point. Uh, my wall skins. 
I have a, a, an idea of what I'm going to do with my wall skins. You want to always square off your edges before you start cutting anything. So I always use some sort of a square. And when you're cutting, at least wear a glove on the hand that the blade is passing by. Maybe not the one that's holding the blade, but this one, yes. And then there's a rule of thumb, if you want to keep your thumb, rule of thumb, heavy on the ruler, light on the blade. Heavy on the ruler, light on the blade. That's the best way to cut. So, we square off our corner. Look at that, I'm just making it with that fold. I can get it right in there. And if you remember, we scribed these edges. And then I also, a little sandpaper, I'm rounding off all the edges of these uh, skins, these panels for the wall skins. Just rounding off these edges slightly so that the vinyl has a, an easier time of wrapping. So here we've got another square edge up top. But in this case, uh, I know that that's not square because I had to follow the contour of the roof. So I'm not going to use a square. I'm going to use the line that I just struck. Heavy on the ruler, light on the blade. All right. And then the last cut is where I freeformed it. This fits into the corner. All right. So this is what we're going to have on all of those wall panels. My skin and on the back of every panel is going to be another piece of insulation. Then I'll wrap this whole thing with the vinyl.